Imagine a world where you could convert any color that you pick into a material color in Flutter. Now that's not something that is available out of the box from Flutter because from the Flutter material package, you can only choose a bunch of colors and not any color out there. And in this video, I'm going to teach you exactly that. But the question is, why would you convert any color into a material color? Consider that you have an application which has a design that requires you to specifically have a color for the buttons. But if you keep yourself restricted with the material colors, you might not be able to do that. So in order to do so, you might have to create your own color palette or your own material color. And I'm going to teach you exactly that in this video. Now remember that there are a bunch of articles out there which claim to have created the material color, but the approach that they are using with the opacity is not accurate as it does not follow the 500 method that Google uses for creating the material color. So there's going to be a lot of content in this video. So watch till the end and let's get into the code now. All right. So we have a really simple application with some basic functionality. We have a button, we have a title here, and then we have the color swatch or the color palette here. Now, if I want, I can go here and pick any other color and you can see that the color of the button also changes immediately. Now, this is no magic done by me. So I'm using a package named Flutter Color Picker and then it is allowing me to just pick any color and to change it. Now I have some code written in the main dot dot that actually does it. So if I just quickly explain what's happening here is that we have a variable here called current color and this is inside the home page state. So I've assigned this to colors.indigo. So if I do a hot reload, it will reset it back to colors.indigo. And then what we have here is that we have a column layout and inside we have a button. And when we click that button, which says tab to change color, which is this one, this basically opens an alert dialog, which is this. So we are, we are kind of styling it using the same variable, which is a picker color, current color. And you can also see that if I go down, you can see that the color for this raised button is also set using the current color property. So if I change it, you can see it immediately changes the color of the button as well. Now, two important things here. One is that the picker color is assigned the current color. So if I open it, you will see that the picker's color is assigned. And also when we change the color, we get back this function, which is called by the picker package. And then we call our function called change color, which basically updates the state. And then it assigns the new color that we got from the package to this current color. So that's why everything is in sync. Now you might be wondering why isn't this color palette reflecting the change? Well, that's what we have to do. We have to be able to pick any color and then change it or create a color palette just like any other material color using that color. So let me show you what this component looks like. So below this button, we just have another container with the text color palette that you see here. And then we have the palette list view component, which is all of this that you see. Now, if I go here, you will see that we create a list. So this build method only returns the children with the get list palette method. And if we go inside here, we create a list of widgets and each item in this list of widgets is a container which has a box decoration and the color of this box decoration is basically what you see here behind the scenes. So you can see that I'm using colors.indigo, but then with this bracket syntax, I'm actually using a variation of the color using this constants array. So we have this array with 50, 100, 200, so we have a bunch of numbers here and we're going to talk about what these are. But for each of this number, we show a different variation of the color right here in the list view. And that's what you see here. Now let's talk about what a material color looks like. If you go to the colors documentation of the Flutter material package, you will see that there are a bunch of colors provided by material like colors pink, colors red, but there are only a number of them and it's not like you can select 
any color out of the picker and make it a material color. Now, if you notice, you will see that we have the same variations here. We have 50, 100, 200, 300, 400, and then towards 900. And you can see that the lower the index is, the kind of pale color you will get it or kind of bright color you will get it. At the 500 index, we have the actual color that we are talking about. And then moving towards 900, the colors become darker. Same goes for colors dot red, colors dot deep orange and whatnot. So the 500 index is the main color and then we have other variations of it. Of it. Now I'm going to use an already existing code out there to create the material colors. And this is by Philip VK. So a big shout out to this guy for putting this gist out there, but I'm going to explain you what this does. Now, the first thing that we have to make sure is that the color that we have in the main dot, which is this variable, we are able to pass this to the palette list view so we can use that color to create the palette list and show that. So first of all, let's go to palette list view. And here we are going to create a parameter or an argument that we can use in the constructor of this palette list view. So we can say final, we can say color and then custom color. Now we have to create a constructor for this. So we can quickly say palette view. Here we are going to define key, which is key. And then we are going to say this dot custom color. And then we are going to call the super method with key set to key. Now that we have this in place, we also need to make sure that we are able to pass this custom color all the way to this get list palette method. So we can use it here instead of this hard coded colors dot indigo. So here we are also going to create a parameter called color custom color, or we can also call it color. And then here we can pass widget dot custom color. There we go. So now we are passing this from get list palette to here. Now we have to pass this from main dot to the palette list view. So let's go back to the main dot dot and here we are going to provide the custom color property and then we are going to say current color, which is the variable that we have here. Now, once we save this, we should be able to run this, but let's do a quick hot reload. And then we are going to go into components and here in the palette list. And here we are going to use this color instead of this, this indigo variation. So I'm going to comment this out so we can use it later. And then here I can simply say color and then I'm going to say color. So now if I save this, you can see that whatever color we have right here is being shown here. If I try to change the color, you can see that it reflects immediately. So we have gone one step forward in what we want to do. Now let's talk about creating that material color. So first of all, you can see that at the very top, we have these indices and if I go here and create this method, I'm going to call it material color. And then I'm going to say get material color. And the reason why we have this material color here is that this function is going to return the end result of the material color. Now this is supposed to receive a color parameter. So I'm going to say color. And now we are going to write the initial logic. Now for each color palette, the first element that we have is 50. But in order to do some calculations, we are going to divide this 50 by 1000, which results in a value that is 0.05. And that's what the guy Flip VK has done in the gist. So this is the value that we are looking forward to. And then we are going to create other values for this as well. So this value is going to be created in a list. So I'm going to call it strengths. And then this is going to be a list of double and then we are going to initiate it with 0.05. Now we are going to create the other values for the strengths as well. So let's quickly do that here. So we can say for, we can say int i equals to one. Now notice that we have the values from 100 to 900. So we can simply say len equals nine. And then we can say i less than equals len. And then we can say I plus plus. And finally, we can say strengths dot add since it's a list and we can say 0 0.1 multiply by I. Now, what this is going to do is that if you see this value, this is 50. So 
0.1 is actually 100 and then 0.2 is going to be 200 so we are doing exactly that so we are adding all the strands right here and then we are going to loop over all of the strands and we are going to create a map called swatch and then this is going to be of type int color because that's what the constructor expects from you and then we are going to also create some really small helper variables that we can use out of this color so we can simply say final int r equals custom or color dot red then g equals color dot green and then b equals color dot blue really handy now we are going to loop over these strands and then we are going to create the values for the swatch so we can say for each and here we get the element and finally we do something with the element so instead of element i can simply say strength since we are looping over the strands and then for each strand we need to calculate the value for the color so in order to do so what philip Vige has done is that he basically creates an index and the way he does is that it he uses strengths which is the current strength multiplied by thousand so if we are using the strength let's say 0 0.05 which is this one this is going to multiply by thousand and that results in 50 which is the first index now this is going to create for that and then it's going to use round and then we are assigning it a value from color from RGBO. Now this is important. We need to provide the value for RGB as well as the opacity. And this opacity is going to be really interesting because we want the opacity to be one, but we want the values of the RGB to be a bit different. So I'm going to provide one here. And now let's talk about what the values of R, G and B looks like. Now the interesting thing is that we want to add a value to these RGB values and for that we need some calculation. So what we need here is that we are going to identify what is the current strength. Is it lighter than the main color which is 500 or it is darker than the main color which is 600, 700, 800, 900. So in order to do so we need to create a variable. So we are going to say final double we'll call it ds or distance or whatever you want to call it then we are going to take the distance from 0 0.5 now this 0 0.5 in our matrix is 500 and then we are going to say minus strength now if we talk about this 100 value this is going to be 0 0.1 so we are going to check 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1 is it greater than 0 or is it less than 0 and that's how we'll calculate some values here so we are going to check hey if the distance is less than zero then use the value of red as it is otherwise if it's greater than zero then we do 255 minus the value of r finally when we get this value then we multiply it with the distance and then we finally do a round of it so i'm going to do the same for the other values as well so let's do this so we've got our G and then it's going to be G and G and similarly, this is going to be B, B and finally B. Now that we have this calculation in place, finally, we can use the swatch as well as the value of the color to create the material color. So we can say return and here we can say material color. And here we need to provide the color dot value, which is the integer value. And then we can say, hey, provide the swatch as well. So now that we have provided both of these values, we actually create a material color. So if I save this now, nothing would happen at the moment, but we need to use this function. So I'm going to go forward to here. And you can see that in the palette list, we were using this color that we passed. So instead of using this color, we need to create a material color. So we can say material color matte color and here we can say get material color from this color that we got and then once we get the material color then we are going to use that matte color but with the indices that we have so we are going to use this as we were doing before 
once we do this you can see that now we got all the colors in the right order so if i go here if i try to change the color you can see that we get the whole palette we get all the swatches you can see we can do this easily and it all looks really good now again there are a bunch of articles out there which do not have the correct method applied because they don't use the 500 method that google uses for creating this material palette so make sure that you follow this right approach so you get the right colors with the brightened colors and the darkened colors and as you can see this is a custom color we are using it in a button and we can also now use it anywhere where you would provide a material color all right so now you know how you can convert any color into a material color but hey have you liked the video yet if not then do it right now and i'm going to create my avatar right here so you can kind of subscribe when you click on it and make sure that the notifications are on because whenever i will upload a video you will be notified right away and you will get the latest and greatest content out of this channel and one more thing i wish you all the best for 2021 i hope that it brings a lot of joy to us compared to what happened in 2020 and i would say happy coding and then till the next video i'm gonna 